Yep, we'll be talking about how to pick what programming language to learn um, and some more things around that of trying to break in. You can learn as many languages as you want. Brandon, to your point, yeah, I started with C Sharp um, in 2007, my professional career. Um, at Pluralsight, our API service that supports all our native applications is actually in C Sharp. Um, even though most of the other most of the other teams uh, don't use C Sharp in the company, but we'll get into those details a little bit for sure on the later on the middle slides about. Um, Kind of which one to choose depending on what your goal is. All right, well, let's get started. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, which programming language to choose or choosing a tech stack, because a lot of times maybe choosing a framework, a library, whatever it is, we'll talk about it. Uh, feel free to put questions in the QA anytime. Uh, we'll definitely have a lot of time for that um, on LinkedIn and Twitter if you want to find me afterwards. Awesome. So let's get started. Uh, just quickly about me. I uh, came to the States as a seven-year-old in the early 90s uh, from what now is Republic of Georgia. I uh, grew up in Maryland, now in Pennsylvania with my beautiful wife and two little kids. Uh, when I do have time for hobbies, I play basketball, poker, always working on side projects. Um, I don't get to code as much on my daily job um, from a manager standpoint. So always want to keep my skills fresh. Um, yeah, I work at Pluralsight. I was originally at ACOG Guru. Uh, we got acquired in 2021. Um, so I've been at Pluralsight since then. So that's me. What are we going to talk about today? Just in case this talk isn't for you, uh, we're going to talk about the criteria for deciding on your stack. Like what criteria you're going to use. I'm not going to tell you what to choose, but I will uh, tell you the framework I would use if I was you. Um, and then once you choose, still a lot. <laughs> so what do you go deep into? What do you wait for later? We'll talk about how to decide on that. Now I'll talk a little bit more about how I learn, um, how I've learned different languages and stacks as I've changed. Um, I've went from, from .NET to basically JavaScript stack personally. So definitely had switches in the middle of the career. Um, and obviously I have to make a decision early on as well. And then we're going to get into the juicy part where a lot of you probably are looking for is you know, what hiring managers are looking for and what are not looking for. Um, Basically, the last four years since 2018, at least 50% of my roles of the companies I've been with has been uh, hiring engineers. So I've seen a lot of resumes, junior, senior, and all that. So this is just my personal take um, from my experiences. So there's two big questions that we're going to ask when we're actually thinking about um, you know, what to learn, uh, what to choose. There's, there's so much out there. There's cool stuff, there's old stuff, um, and everyone will have an opinion. Uh, the first question you want to ask yourself is, you know, what's your goal? And, uh, you know, go a little specific into that. Is it just get a software dev job, get a job in the software industry? Is it um, get a specific job at a company? At, I want to work at Google, or I want to work in the health field. Uh, you really want to, you want to really Pick what's important to you because depending on that is your next step. You're going to scour the internets, right? And you're going to try to see what, what makes sense. Uh, what are the words that are being repeated? Um, because a lot of times uh, there's patterns, right? Um, health companies like to use a certain stack. How do startups in those space like to use a certain stack? So you want to find out what is right for you based on your goal. And your goal might be a startup idea, or your goal might just be a, a project you want to do. You want to write a Chrome extension that's something that you really uh, want working for you, right? Or get a certification. Whatever it is, you pick your goal. And the next criteria 
is something some people don't talk about, but what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and what do you really like to do? Are you a visual person, you draw on the side, you make things on the side, are you one of those logical math people um, where you don't, where you always the A plus, A plus student in school or, um, you know, are you someone that's more creative? And other things too, are you a multitasker? Are you always liking to do different things or do you really like to sit down and focus? And not just what are you good at from a strength standpoint, but like, what do you enjoy? And what do you not enjoy, right? Because uh, that's gonna make a difference. And if you can choose something that aligns more with uh, what you're good at and what you wanna, wanna do in general, um, it'll probably be a, a good match. So those are our two criteria. Once we decide on our goal, so let's say for a lot of us, it's, it's finding a job. Oh, we're going to scour the internet for those postings. So in general, if you want a junior dev job and it's a remote, you know, just go on Indeed, LinkedIn, whatever it is, and look for what, what is the language that's mostly used. So an example here is um, the first part of my career was in the D.C. Baltimore area, and a lot of it was consulting, contracting with government um, type of deals. So it was a lot of .NET, a lot of C Sharp, sometimes Java. And at first, when you know, it was moving from, uh, from old ways of doing JavaScript, it was Angular, right? But if you're around colleges, Python could be something that's big around companies that are focused on data and AI, right? Um, or if you're maybe it's even Golang or Pascal, there's you know all kinds of different things depending on what you want, um, what, what you want, to, what kind of job you want, local job, specific job. So again, based on your specific goal. Um, most common is going to be JavaScript stack and web development. Like, um, that's pretty much the reality for right now. And then the next part of it is if you are going to go web development or really any kind of development that has a, a visual aspect or a back end aspect, is do you want to be a front end developer or a back end developer? And for sure, don't be a full stack developer. Don't be a junior full stack developer, right? You have to learn a lot. And um, I wouldn't expect, you know, a junior engineer to know it all, right? And obviously it's up to your interest. So using an example of, you know, what's most popular, which for web development right now, which is JavaScript. Um, you know, if you're going front end, you want to learn React. You can do Angular, you can do Vue. I personally love Vue, but um, there's going to be less jobs, right? So if your goal is to get a certain job where Vue.js is being used, then you might want to use Vue. Um, I mean, Angular is still pretty popular, especially in the .NET world. Um, so you might want to do that. But in general, you know, for most jobs are going to be React. Most of the last last three out of the four jobs I had, three of them were React, and one was Vue. And back end, you know, Node.js is popular right now. Um, but really, you could learn any language you want. You can learn Java, you can learn C Sharp for sure. And then you got to learn some kind of database. You're going to end up knowing both no SQL, SQL. It really doesn't matter which one, but you want to know at least one. And we'll go more into specifics as we go here. Um, and just quickly, if, if your goal is not getting a job, you know, you want to be thinking in the same way, like, if you're writing a real time chat app, go go look on YouTube and you can find you know a lot of examples of Firebase and Node and how to do that. Uh, if you want to do video games, C Sharp is it. I don't do video games. I don't know. You got to research it and figure it out. Really look at the community around what you want to do and see where the most support is. Now, obviously, you can use a lot of languages to solve a lot of problems. So you have to make decisions and really focus on their goal as have to make the decision. So if you want to write a certain AI based project idea and Python seems like the best way to go, but there's also support from a JavaScript standpoint and you already know JavaScript, you know, what's most important to you? Get it up and working. Don't learn a new language. So get up working JavaScript or getting a job within using with using that project. So maybe you do want to take time to learn that language. So you really want to use that framework of what your main goal is to make a lot of decisions as you start getting um, closer to actually learning. So that's that. So use your, you use your framework, your goal is, and 
what your strengths are, and you, you know, you kind of pick what you're doing. And for our example, then on here, I'm just going to use that you pick front end and you pick React.js. Um, but we're going to, you know, talk more of that. But just as an example, um, there's a lot out there. So even if you just pick, I want to be a front end developer, I just want to use React.js. Just a library, just a JavaScript library, right? It's still a lot. And you're still going to have to make decisions unless you want to learn for a long time what you should learn or not. So your goal is getting a job, a front end web development job using React.js. You definitely want to learn JavaScript basics, right? It's a JavaScript library. But React has already been around for a little bit. And there's old ways of doing things and new ways of doing things. You want to learn the new way, right? Because the old way is going to go away. Now, you may get a job where you have to work on the old way, but that's OK. You'll learn it when you need to, right? If you need to. You want to learn how to write tests, right? Whatever you pick, you want to know how to test. Um, the industry is going toward, towards stepping away for, from QA, stepping away from ownership, going away from the developer, and being able to code everything, test everything, and put out their production in one way without blockers. So you really want to, you do want to focus on testing. And that's one thing we'll, you know, we'll, you know, I do want to put out there. And then you want to learn how to interact with the API because that's where front end and back end meet, right? So you're learning React, you want to you want to learn these things. Before I get into what you don't want to learn, you want you want to know everything, right? Of course, everything is important. I'm not saying you don't want to learn these eventually, but what do you want to go deep into now versus later, right? State management. So if you've gone to React a little bit, it can get really confusing. If you have a big app and you can't just pass props down, what do you do, right? There's Redux, MobX, now there's even better ways to do it just with React. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about some of the most complex thing if you're applying as a junior developer, right? Remember your goal. If you're making a big app by yourself that you need scale and has a lot of client needs, then maybe, maybe you do need to learn this. But on the goal we're working on, we don't. There's a lot of ways to organize a React app. Components, where, pages, views, all this different stuff, don't worry about that too much, right? Because you're gonna come into an architected system, you're not an architect. You're gonna come into patterns that you can follow, right? Do you know how to write, write React, right? Do you know how to read it? That's more important, actually knowing the right way to organize a React project because you won't be asked to do that as a junior engineer. And like I said, don't, don't learn the old ways unless you need it for your basics, right? There's some old JavaScript code, you're using, um, you're using lets and cons, you're not using vars, but you still wanna know why not use vars, right? So it's, it's a little bit of a trick, but. And then there's a lot that goes into a React app, right? There's Babel, there's Webpack, all these things are gonna come up. You're gonna wanna go into that source code and you're gonna wanna figure out like, oh, how does Webpack work? How does everything get bundled together? What's JSX? You might wanna know about it, to speak about it, to answer questions about it, but you're not gonna be asked to solve Webpack you know, production problems as a junior engineer, or if you are, then you'll be given the space to figure it out, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's my opinion there. Um, in general, right, unless what some things you're gonna get stuck on, right, and not stuck on is you wanna put your app out there, right? There's all this cloud stuff to learn, but unless you wanna be a DevOps engineer, you know, you don't have to be an AWS expert. You want to maybe figure out how to put something um, on online uh, to share, but you know you don't have to worry about the load balance and all that advanced concepts unless you know that's that's what you want to do. That's what your goal is. There's a million design patterns, and you want to be getting good at design patterns and doing things efficiently. But just learning what a design pattern is and not implementing it in an actual project. It's probably not super helpful, right? So this is one of those things that I found that you learn you know, throughout your career. So you might want to look at them, see some basic ones, think about how to implement them, but don't get, don't read the whole design <laughs> design pattern book and memorize it um, unless you know, you're super fast or something. But in general, algorithms. So this is a big one, right? If you want to work for Facebook, if you want to work for Google, yeah, you're going to have to know algorithms to get past the interview process. And in general, if you want to know computer science, well, and you want to get a computer science job, that's something you want to think about. It. But if you just want to be 
uh, you know, a web developer and you're on the front end um, or whatnot, you may not need to know all the complexity of all the algorithms, how to parse through, you know, a complex tree or something like that um, to solve your problems. You might need to, and then you learn when it comes up, right? And like CI, CD pipeline. So I think you see here, there's a lot of stuff outside of React that you're going to be drawn to want to learn when you're learning React. So really, you gotta you gotta stick to to the goals here. In general, there are some things outside of React. Even if you're learning, that you have to learn. Right? Git. Everyone uses Git. Uh, most people use GitHub. Not everyone is Bitbucket. There's other ones out there. But you got you want to learn how to how to use Git for sure. Testing. I mentioned it before. I'm gonna mention it again. You want to learn. And not just unit testing. You may not want to. You may not need to know how to write end-to-end -end tests, but you need to at least understand testing and why it's important and when you want to do what. I have solid up here on the right, but basically object-oriented functional program fundamentals. Right, you want to think about how to write code well, not necessarily design patterns, but basic things. Right, you want to make your code readable. You want to make your your code in a way that's maintainable. Right, so you want to be thinking about those as you're learning React or whatever you're learning for sure. Most modern version, right, because the old stuff's going away, even though it's going to be supported and some people will still use it, there's legacy code. You can learn those way of doing things. Documentation's out there. You don't want to kind of waste your time now, but you want to move forward. And be comfortable with pairing, and we're going to get into it. It's a little sneak peek of what's next. All right, so ways to learn. Check. Okay. Again, this is my personal way I learn. Um, if you if you're good at learning, you know yourself, please, you know, skip it. Don't listen to me. This is just what I do. So, so this is my path. I'm learning a new language, a framework, a new library. I watch a tutorial. I don't follow along. I don't code along. I just watch it, right? Because the first your mind want, the way my mind works, it wants to learn everything, right? So I want to understand it, and sometimes it's hard for me to understand everything and do it at the same time, right? Where I don't fully understand and I don't fully do. Then the second time around, I either watch the same tutorial, or a different tutorial, or you know follow along at a, like a blog type tutorial, and actually fully follow along and write everything out. I want to have the working code base just the same. And then the third step which I think you should get to, is then create something different with that framework, with that language, with that whatever you're learning outside of the tutorial, right? This is where you take the concepts you've learned, things you've copied, and try to do it yourself. And the fourth step is, you know, if there is a bigger project you're working on or it's for work, whatever it is, that's when I actually implement it there. So by the time I'm implementing in my final, a final project or whatever I've learned it for, I really learned it at least three times. Repetition for me is super important, and actually doing it is very important as well. This is not an official framework. This is just something I kind of think of in a way. I'm sure a lot of smart people have other things. But when you are learning, when you're deciding to dive deep or not into something, there's there's a lot of ways, you know, how deep you go into something, right? So there's just like an awareness. I know React exists. I know it's for front end web apps capabilities. What can I do with React? What can I do with React? The next level, can I actually have a deep technical discussion with other people that can write React? Um, and all these are important. And everything you learn will fall into some level of this, right? Um, and it's something you want to think about because you might want to learn React to an actual you know, point where you can code React. But maybe you want to learn a little bit about AWS or a little bit about design patterns where you feel like you can have a discussion about it, but you're not fully confident, right? And so after actually doing, you know, you kind of become an expert, right? So am I a React uh, architect? No, I'm definitely not an expert. I would say I'm in the actually doing part. Uh, you know, I can learn it, but I don't know the best ways to do it. A lot of scale questions, you know, a lot of newer stuff. Like I said, my day job, I don't code that much anymore. So. Um, I have to decide when I when I'm learning a new technology what level to go to. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, we're going to the last part. This is the juicy part for everyone that 
wants to um, get into the engineering field. Again, this is from my personal experience to each their own. So what are hiring managers looking for? Um, evidence that you're competent, right? Um, it's, it's, a, it's an easy question, but it's a hard one, especially you know, when you don't have prior experience. If I'm looking at a resume that has no prior engineering jobs, no degree in computer science, you know, how do I know if you're competent, right? And we'll talk about that. So you wanna make sure you can prove that you're competent. You wanna make sure you're a team player because you're studying on your own, but when you're gonna be in a company, a large percentage of the time you're working on a team, right? And you're not working on a code base by yourself. You wanna prove you can learn fast. Um, and a more specific thing is you wanna, well, what I wanna know as a hiring manager is I wanna know what you do when you get stuck, right? Because if you do take, if you do learn something to the point where you're actually doing, where you're actually coding and creating stuff, at some point, you're gonna have a problem and you're gonna be like, I don't know how to solve it. And we'll talk about um, that as well. So evidence that you're GitHub, the evidence that you're competent, GitHub, make a project, right? Because I get a resume and there's a link, I go to the project, I look at your code and I'm seeing what, what you can do, right? And I'm seeing your competence. So, and that's why I say testing, right? Because the first thing I'm looking for is tests. How do you know your code's working, right? Um, so that's a great way to show confidence. It's a great way to show what you're focusing on diving deep into a knot, right? You're not going to be able to create a project um, and there, that has everything, right? Don't let imposter syndrome take it down. Like, oh, I need to make sure my code has this design patterns and this and that. Just pick a couple important things that you want to make sure your project has and, and then you can make sure to highlight that. You got to be ready to take do take them assignments. So whenever we're hiring anyone in my team's we're going to have some kind of pairing exercise that's based off a of take home assignment most of the time, right? So they show different things. And that's why I kind of talked to you about the, the pairing with engineers, right? Like that is one way you can show your competence, right? We're actually working, seeing how it will be to work with others. Um, so it's just something you want to prepare for and practice, uh, pair with your friends and any mentors. I'm sure there's a million take home assignment examples online if you want to. And then of course, if you have any references that are, that could be you know could be useful, a mentor or something like that, even if it's not from a past job, that could be useful as well. To the question of when do you, what to do when you get stuck, I'm not going to tell you the answer. Everyone does something different. Um, you know, you search Stack Overflow, you use Chat GPT now. Um, you have mentors, friends. Do you sleep on it? Pay someone else to do it. Probably don't want to answer that but that way, but maybe, you know, you want to be honest. I don't know. But I want to know how you get unstuck. Maybe use an example. One time I was stuck trying to do this, and this is the process I went through, right? It's something I definitely want to know as a hiring manager. What I'm not looking for, a lot of these are going to be repeats, right? I'm not looking for an expert. You're, you're, you're going for a junior position. I don't expect someone to be an expert, right? I'm more impressed if someone just knows the right things that give you know will bring value to my team, right? Um, even though you, I don't expect you to be an expert, you know I do expect you to contribute right away, right? So you do need to like no React if you come on a React project, so you can get on it and start working right away. And I'm not looking for someone who's intimidating and working closely with other engineers. Like I said, it's a team environment. A lot of these environments are pairing environments. And a lot of times you're going to, as a junior engineer or, you know, starting out anywhere in the engineering field, you're going to you're gonna have to talk to other engineers. You're going to have to talk to other product managers, to, you know, to all kind of cross-functional team members. So really, you know, not someone who's intimidating, right? It's, even though, you know, in the past, traditionally, an engineer, you know, looked like someone in the corner coding on their computer. It's not like that anymore, right? It's, it's a much more... Um, social type of environment, even remotely. And I've been working remotely since 2018. Still, right? Um, still, the expectation is the same. And I need someone who's willing to do whatever it takes. That does not mean that you're working until 2 a.m. every day, right? But it does mean if you need to learn a new library or framework to get a job done, you're going to learn it, right? You're open to learning. Um, that's what that really means to me. 
So let's wrap up. And then we are two, two, four minutes ahead of schedule. And I'll get to the Q&A, even though there's no Q&A yet. Maybe I'll read the chat. Or if anyone has any questions, they can speak up. Um, so let's wrap up. If you've been sleeping, to pick the right stack, you want to know your goal. You want to think about your strengths, right? You want to focus once you've picked what you're working on. You want to focus on what you need to learn and ignore everything else because there's going to be there's just going to be a lot. And you want to think about how deep you're learning everything, right? Do you need to actually do everything? Do you need to become an expert in something? And then if you know what your hiring manager is going to want, give them what you want, what they want, right? If you know you're going to need to build a project, start thinking about that right away, right? Start thinking about if that's the deliverable you're going to end up with when, when you're done. Awesome. All right, we got a question in Q&A. Would it be a good idea to get a short computer science course under my belt before I start? That's a great question. It depends on your goal. If you're looking to work at Google or some or, or a field where it has complexity above regular web development job, then yes. Uh, if you're working a regular, if you want to work with a regular SaaS product company, I would say no. Um, for example, here at Plural Site where I work, um, we don't look for degrees at all, right? Um, we actually think of it as kind of a bias right you have a bias now for your own personal confidence you know if that's something you want to do you can do it i did start a computer science major early on in my life and left because um i was not interested in that side of development but it's really up to you so i would say you don't have to but if you want to yeah i don't think i don't think you should let it stop stop you from learning language, basically. I, I, I think you should just go for it. Um, let me just read some of these, some of these comments here. I haven't had a chance to get into that. Yeah, I mean, C Sharp, to your question, Brent, to your talk about C Sharp. Um, yeah, I mean, C Sharp developers are always gonna be needed. Um, it's just fallen out of favor as the new hip thing. So. You're gonna, unless there's a specific reason, you're not really gonna find a startup, right? You're you're not gonna find new companies using JavaScript too much, right? Unless there's, I mean, C sharp too much, unless there's a specific reason. Um, but you know, C sharp is gonna be needed for a while, so I'd say it's you can still still keep going in that direction. Yeah, so if web development is not your goal, Mike, that's it's awesome. The mean stack was, you know, it was very popular and, and some versions of it are still popular. But yeah, if that's not something you, you want to do, um, web development in general, there's a lot of different different things you get into. Um, if you want to stick in the same type of companies, but not necessarily be an engineer, like I have several I know several folks who went from engineer to product manager, right? You're already kind of um, on that track. So that's something to think about as well. Okay, so we got a question from Pierre here. Are there any steps in the test pyramid that overlap in category? And so how does that impact a workflow? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> Getting into the deep flows, if also like what is the end to end test when you have a lot of pieces and small services and there is a lot of overlap. The way I like to think about is a unit test is the smallest you know, possible unit. And we can go deeper. There's like behavior versus functional, but the smallest possible piece you can test, right? If you have a code base where every little piece is tested, uh, unit tests have a lot a lot less of a cost to be written, right? So I've been on code bases, 20-year-old code bases, where it takes eight hours to run a test suite. Uh, so you can have maybe a lot of confidence once that test suite uh, runs that you're not going to 
you know, create, you know, introduce regression and a bug into the system. But what if by hour six there you get rejected? You know, it's it's not a, it's not that great. So you wanna you wanna put in as many unit tests as possible, right? And then you know, when you get to the point of end to end tests, you're not you sh your goal shouldn't be to end to end end to end test everything, right? It should be your most important workflows or your most important your most important end-to-end -end things that a customer does, right? If you work for Uber, um, getting a ride, um, you know, connected to a ride, you know, that's probably a good end-to-end -end test if possible at all, right? Because Uber is probably going to be a microservice architecture and then is the end-to-end -end just testing one service. So we get into a lot of questions there for sure. All right, we got some more um, about how long should you spend learning a language before you apply your skills? Everyone's different. Uh, I would say... If you're starting, you know, it depends where you're starting from, even your background, right? Do you know how to use a computer? Do you know how to find a file on your system? Depending on all that, I'll say six months to two years um, is what I would say. <laughs> but uh, it really it really depends on a lot of your other, other things. Uh, Kelly, where are likely places to get first jobs and initial experience, large companies, small companies, where we look for a first job? Um, Make yourself available to recruiters. Uh, that would be number one, right? Um, there's there's a lot of recruiters. There's some are great. Um, big companies are good because they have programs. I know at Plural Site we have an internship program, um, as well as we look to hire uh, junior engineers all the time. So you really you can find big companies. Um, we're bigger companies. Plural Sites about you know, 1,500, 2,000 people, but even bigger companies. I prefer usually actually smaller companies. Uh, you, get to, you get to wear a lot of hats and it's a less formal of interview process. So um, sometimes it could be easier to get a job at a smaller company. But again, I apply to all of them. Or if you have an interest, right, what, what, or what's your goal, right? If you want to kind of learn more than just just like what you're focusing on if you're willing if that's your goal maybe a smaller company if you kind of just want to become an expert in one thing bigger best chances your company okay um got 10 more minutes here i'll go through amber in the boot camp i attended we learned react no js express mm -hmm. mongo on the other hand we also have django python how i take a project using flask i can get the job i should i continue to work with it since i already dove into or should i go back to focus on something else you should stay in the react node express mongo track for sure um yeah but keep like the percentage your expectation of and nothing against the applier, right? When when I have a job opening, there's you know a hundred applications, a thousand applications, and then you know what 30, 40 take-home tests. There could be a lot of reasons, and just because you're not a match from the experience standpoint, or or what a lot of reasons. So I would expect, you know, best case scenarios, not gonna be a 50% success rate with interviews, right? You want to do as many interviews again, because it's also a skill set, right? Being interviewed is a skill set. The more interviews you do, the more times you ask a question. Like I can tell you right now, if I'm gonna go to a JavaScript interview, I gotta learn what closures are. I gotta learn what's the difference between you know var and 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 let and and cost all those things, right? So if you want to focus a month or two on getting better at interviewing, that's something um, that's something you can do as well. Yes, Martin, it will be recorded and available. Do you have any tips for networking? How do we balance being able to network for ourselves out there with still learning language skills as a beginner? Yeah, network. Um, don't network how they suggest in some blogs and just connect with everyone on LinkedIn and send general messages, right? Make it very specific to the person. If someone reaches out to me on LinkedIn with a specific message, especially if they're an engineer looking for any question, I will answer them. If someone gives me a generic message, I'm probably going to block you. <laughs> like, that's, that's just the way it is. But go, especially if you have networking events, there's meetups all the time. Go, go. It doesn't matter how much of a newbie you are. You should be independent, right? Network is going to be more important than anything else in finding a job and, and stuff like that for sure. Um, where, with AI websites like Wix, okay, so no code. Uh -huh, will that is one of their jobs in the future, more precisely, if I want to go 
Um, to your first question, no. Um, I, I worked for a no-code company before. Um, all this stuff is great, but the it's very limited, right? It's it's like anything else. When something's abstracted and made easy, that's great for 80 to 90% of the use cases, but there's always going to be a case where a developer has to come in, right, or, or custom. And some of the early iterations of this for people showing my age here is SharePoint, right? SharePoint came out and it's supposed to be, oh, great, this intranet, you can just make um, kind of these internal, you don't have to have as much of a development, but you know, SharePoint's not even really around anymore. So um, they have good use cases and no code's awesome, but I don't think we're anywhere close to actually um, not having front end developers because uh, every, every company has them that has any kind of um, application. Okay, should someone major in IT or computer science? I'm pretty sure if you could direct the question, should everybody learn a program like Python or C++? Okay, so again, it depends on your goal, right? If you wanna work for NASA or Google, yeah, you wanna learn computer science. Um, IT, I don't know about IT in general anymore. IT, what it means in companies these days is like getting your computer to you, making sure it's secure, right? It's not actually development in a way. So I'm not really sure what's best for IT. Um, learning your first programming language in a computer science environment is different than the goal of like getting a job. So whether it's C++, Java, Python, you're learning computer science concepts, it doesn't really matter which one you're picking, right? Because you might actually do a different stack, right? Or when I was doing computer science, initially I was learning C++, but you know, I've never worked with that professionally. Um, but I would pick Python if I had to pick for sure over, um, over, over C++. Um, algorithms, same answer there, like, um, in my 15 years of working in software engineering, how many times have I had to use a complex algorithm to solve a problem versus it being abstracted out by the framework or whatever I'm using? I don't remember any specific ones, maybe once or twice, um, but I haven't worked for NASA or Google, right? I've worked either for consulting companies or product companies that, you know, aren't like super complex, you know, like Pluralsight definitely has complexity. Um, but it's not like, it's not, it's not, it's not too much. So I would say it depends. And again, if you're trying to pass an interview that's with like a fan company, you have to learn those algorithms, you know, just to pass it. Right. Not sure if I address your questions exactly. Um, let me go into the chat. Um, so it doesn't matter. There is no recommended server for the backend. You mean as far as hosting React? Um, most people host React with Node Express, but you can host React with .NET. You can do it in other ways. Um, it really depends. And with that said, I know a lot of this talk was picking technologies based on what's in the job descriptions, a lot of places may hire you even if you don't know that language, right? A lot of places hire language agnostic, right? And I'll ask you a question. So that's something to keep in mind. So Sung, to your question, um, if we use React as front end, is the recommended web server node since we're staying with JS? I mean, to run React, sure, that, that, that's fine. Um, if you're talking about back end, if you wanna be a full stack engineer uh, from the get go, Node would be easiest because it's the same language, but you can you can do whatever backend you want, whether it's Python, or Django. Performance issues, yeah, that's a good one. But again, you can't um, kind of know ahead of time what you need. Like back in the day, there was crazy SQL performance issues that I had to deal with, where I had to learn about stuff about SQL databases that I don't want to ever learn again, right? to solve those problems. So as a hiring manager, I want to hire someone that's able to learn those and able to solve those performance issues um, for sure. But, you know, um, learning everything ahead of time, it might be overkill there. All right, we got a couple more minutes here. Let's see if any more questions are coming in. Okay. Salary ranges. Yeah, I mean, it's changing a lot with the remote situation. So US based, I would say a good range, if you exclude like if you exclude Silicon Valley in New York City, 
I would say, you know, aiming from like 60 to 90,000 salary per year is, is average. Um, there's some that are going to pay six figures for sure. There's some local ones that are going to be much less. Um, but you know, somewhere in between that 50 to 100k range salary is um, what I have seen. But again, there's definitely outliers. Um, Stacks. Every time I see a job listing for LinkedIn for React Dev, it's getting like 800 applications one day. Is there? Yeah, there is ways you can stack out, stand out. One, networking. Right? Can you reach out to that person on LinkedIn? Can you talk to anyone in the company? Always, always, always. If I get a referral. If I have any way, another connection to the person, you know, they're always going to get an advantage. So networking, talk to the hiring manager, you know, connect them on LinkedIn. Uh, if there's anyone within the company and then write a cool project, right? Um, I know we didn't do cover letters anymore, but if there is an opportunity to write something, why you're interested, smaller companies really care about why you want to work for them, right? So if there's a smaller company you're applying to really put out there why you want to work for them um stuff like that you know you want to you want to make sure you're doing something more if they're getting 800 applications it's better for you to focus on a couple of jobs and really doing the application centered towards them maybe even changing your resume just for that job versus trying to apply to a, a thousand jobs that have 800 applicants each um is there a different skill mindset required for back-end development yes and no right uh front-end development has gotten to the point now where there's like what i call back-end front-end development right there's a lot of logic components set up right and in a, in a bigger job in a bigger company you have a designer you have a ux expert you have a product manager by the time you're working on the front end like all the visual stuff is done for you right it's, it's different in a smaller company where you might be more responsible for that but in general on the front end right you're thinking about visual things you're thinking about placement you're thinking about user interaction and you cut that off in the back end. A lot of times you're thinking about processing, how to save data, get data out there, manipulate the data, and what you need to give to the front end. So the back end is a lot more logical, a lot of more of the computer science concepts, not purely, they're, they're everywhere, but are gonna be in that back end. So if you're more of a logical person, if you like solving um, problems and math and stuff, I would say you go towards the back end. Should we just focus, become front end or back end rather than focus on becoming full stack developer? Also, I heard companies hire junior and front end developers, not back end developers. Very risky to try. Yes, definitely just do front end or back end development, right? Because you already have so much to learn. You're already not going to become an expert. When you come into the company, if you want to, there's going to be a chance for you to probably learn back end development, right? Or front end development. Um, so just focus on one and then her companies have a junior friend that will now back end developers. So what's been happening in the industry is these boot camps and they teach you JavaScript, right? And they, a lot of times they teach you React. So a lot more boot campers are good at front end. Um, and one job I had, I was uh, the lead there and everyone other than me was from a JavaScript boot camp. But we had, so we have React in the front end, but we had C Sharp API and then Microsoft SQL database, right? So I was the only one able to work on those until I leveled them up. With that said, I don't think there's any bias towards hiring junior back end developers or front end developers. I just think it's the supply right now, right? The supply is more front end developers. They're a junior. Um, and it's funner, right? When you're getting into development, it's fun to do stuff that you see, right? You can show it to your friends. It's hard to, to show them an algorithm on the back end that does some processing and so on. Awesome. All right, we're out of time. Thanks everyone so much for joining. This has been um, great for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, reach out to LinkedIn or Twitter um, or my email is my name with my middle initial, iliapilumbri at gmail.com. Uh, the recording will be available. Thanks everyone for joining. Good luck um, and hope I could help. Have a great one.